Gamers and welcome back to the South Main Auto Channel. Uh, a lot of you know that follow us on the socials that we've uh, I've installed a new alignment rack, so I bought a new Challenger um, 4015 XAO, I think they call it. So it's a 15,000 pound lift. It takes up to a 210 inch wheelbase, open front, dual bridge jacks, uh, because I'm getting sick of farming out my alignment. So we did that. Uh, I chose a Hoffman uh, Geoliner 678, so Hoffman, John Bean, Snap on kind of all the same same stuff. Uh, I've got that, we've got that installed. You guys have wanted to see a wheel alignment video. Um, so I'm gonna bring you along and do that. We've got uh, 1993, 92, something like that, Dodge Stealth here. Uh, pretty clean. Uh, I tried to do an alignment on it last year before he parked it and the rear tow links were seized up, the cam bolts were seized up. So he parked it for the winter, got it out this spring. Uh, we've got the new arms, I got the new cam bolts I took and put them in. And so now we should be able to perform four wheel alignment on it. It does have adjustable camber and toe in the front and camber and toe in the rear. And I assume everything's gonna be off in the back at least because we're just back there meddling with stuff. So first thing first, we're gonna put the targets on the wheels. Now the targets that I have uh, go right on the tire. You gotta make sure they're hitting on all three contact points. Now I also bought the rim clamp style one. So if you get a car in, uh, like we had an Impala in the other day that had skirts on it, um, had a Subaru in that didn't have enough clearance between the wheel well, uh, you know, and the wheel arch and the top of the tire and some other cars where we've had to have the rim style clamp. So I have both of them, but in this one we're going to use this. I know when I was looking for alignment machines, I didn't find any videos on YouTube on the 678 Hoffman other than a couple little, you know, shaky cell phone vids. Uh, anyway, we're going to start the alignment and we need to start the alignment by selecting start alignment or we can just go with the barcode reader, shoot it with our laser beam. Barcode on the door. Whoop. That should enter all our info for us. I don't know how well it's going to show up, but you can see that it selected a Dodge Stealth two wheel drive 91 to 96. We're going to use this vehicle here. And this runs off of Linux instead of Windows, so it's a little more stable. Uh, it gives us our specs, our preference, front and back, um, you know, min max values, all of that stuff. No specific instructions as far as loading the car, so we're just going to hit start. So what it's going to get now is the wheel compensation. The heads are coming down, they're looking for the targets. Then we're going to roll the vehicle ahead, roll it back, roll it back ahead. It's going to compensate for wheel run out, measure camber and tow uh, front and back. Then we'll do a caster sweep with it. pins out of the front turn plates. Now we have to install the brake pedal depressor. It's so depressing. That's the middle pedal. You got a three pedal system. I got it fired up. Let the clutch up slow in case you got it in gear. Now what it's going to measure is caster on the front end. Then what I'm going to do at this point is we'll level the steering wheel. So it's my habit when we're doing this, is I'll turn left, I'll turn right, and then I'll bring it back to the left and stop when it's center on that left hand sweep. That usually gets you a straight steering wheel every single time. Oh, that looks good. Oh, I can't even fit in these things. As you can see on the screen, it wants us to level the steering wheel, which we have done. We'll click ahead and this will give us all of our readings. Whoa, fella, she's not even close. Everything's out. Caster in the front axle is dead on the money, which is great, because I do not believe that's adjustable on this car. Camber is, it does have cam bolts in the front struts. Uh, our total tow is good, but obviously our steering wheel is a little bit off. Uh, camber and tow in the rear is off. So we're going to go ahead and make our adjustments on our rear first, set our camber, set our tow, and then we'll come to the front and straighten that out. So I just want to look at the rear measurements only at this point. And here we go, let's raise her up. I'm going to pull the pin 
comes out of the rear turn plates, so the rear end of the car is able to move. Just like the slip plates for the front, it allows us when we make adjustments that this whole table here on the liner rack will move to and fro. So now we got her up in the air. Shine a little light on this thing. Here's our adjusters back here, so we're going to be able to adjust camber and tow with the two adjustable links in the rear. And we're going to do this, like I said, we're going to do it on the turn plates. Uh, there are options to do it elevated, but being that these bushings need to be loaded once they're tightened, we want to do this vehicle on the ground. Uh, it's going to be kind of tricky to show you the screen and the adjustment here. But we're going to take and crack these loose. I just put in these new arms and new cam bolts there on the front side. So we're just going to crack them loose. And then hopefully we can get it first try. So sometimes instead of looking and figuring it out, just move your adjuster. We'll see what way it moves on our screen here. Whatever way you think it needs to move, go the opposite. camber just about dead on there. I'm going to snug that one up. And then we'll adjust that toe link a little bit. Alright, so tweak that toe link whichever way it needs to go. Wrong way fella. Take my own advice. So we're going to adjust that. They're super duper sensitive. Get as close as we can. Try to snug that one up a little bit. Now with everything tight there, we'll take and just bounce the car, kind of let it reset on that suspension, see where everything lands. It should theoretically go back unless there's a lot of tension on it. The other thing you can do too is once we're done is we'll roll the car back, roll it ahead and make sure everything's kind of sitting cool. Pay attention to your turn plates. If they seem to be bound up, you got one like, you know, all the way maxed out. You know, you're gonna have to move the car to recenter that turntable. Otherwise it's just, you know, tweaking the suspension. But uh, you can usually tell by bouncing them, You'll see them turn plates move. And you can see our adjustments on the right side stayed pretty well. If you're sitting here splitting hairs trying to get, you know, hundred thousandths of a degree, <laughs> forget about it. Because frankly, you're never going to get it. I mean, you will, but then as soon as you, you know, sit in the car or fart in the seat or sneeze, uh, you know, you're off a little bit. So, you know, use your mind, get it as close as you can. You know, not just in the green, but get it as close as, close as you can. We're gonna move this toe link here. I knew it needed to go the other way. No, it doesn't need to go this way. So we're gonna adjust this toe link, watching the screen, which you can't see. We're gonna get her close. If you're just doing green and go alignments, try to do a little better. It doesn't take much to tweak a car in, just you know, the best you can. Camber is dead on the money. Got lucky with that one because I just think twirling all over the place. Tighten up our toe link. Oh, beautiful. Enhance. So there's our final readings on the back. Everything looks pretty good. We're going to jounce it and then we're going to go work on the front. That looks pretty well. It's straight up, straight forward. Now we're going to look at our front measurements. I guess we can look at all of them together here. Rear is good. Now our front, we're going to go after this camber. Uh, like I say, the caster is good. Don't believe it's adjustable. I'd have to double check, but we'll go after the camber. Then we'll set the toe and we'll flush this toilet. So when we're doing the front, we're going to want to lock the steering wheel. So we'll stick a steering wheel lock on it. Uh, let's see if I can get my head in here. Oh, 
jam that down. Make sure our brake pedal is still depressed because we're probably going to do the front with it elevated. So you might observe that the front toe is on now or you know our total toe I think was pretty close to core but you can see our actual toe is good and we haven't even moved our steering wheel and that's because we've changed the thrust angle of the vehicle so uh, if that makes sense to you. Uh, what we want to do is we want to be able to jack it up so we're just going to go here we're going to go to elevated adjust. It's going to want us to lock the steering wheel and the brakes as it says here. Lock steering wheel, depress your brakes. We're going to raise the vehicle up. So we're going to set the vehicle at the heights we're going to work on it right now it's too high so we're going to let lift down before we hit next now that it's at a comfortable work height that should have saved all of our measurements and it did so let's make some adjustments here on the right front we have our cam bolt there at the very top of the strut let me see what size there i think 17. now i always put my lock or my lift my jack my bridge jack on the lock because when you're under here meddling around it's real easy to hit that down lever so we're going to see if we can't loosen up the bottom bolt. So we're going to be on this bottom strut bolt here. Let's see if I get a ratchet in there maybe. Must have just been being a Sally. It really didn't move that hard. Must be my wrench is hitting something. Let's see if we can't get the top cam bolt loose now. Come on. Gotta get that wiggle down there. We don't want to slip and bust your knuckles on our rim. Let's try my lucky ratchet. This one's got a 12 point socket on it, so it might fit over the crust a little better. Or it does. Okay. I feel that one coming loose, and we want to hold this side of the cam so we don't rotate anything. Okay, our cam bolt's loose. We need to move our cam in, our camber in, because right now, I'm sorry, we need to move it out because it's negative. And for whatever reason, this car wants the camber at zero. It's kind of odd. I thought most sports cars had a little bit of negative camber, but not Mitsubishi slash Dodge. Some Dodge guys get offended when you call your Mitsubishi 3000 or Dodge Avenger a Mitsubishi. Watch the screen and make it green. It's going to be the top, uh, the right side middle reading is what we're going to be changing. Let me get my wrench back on there. Now we could leave it slightly negative to match the other side. We'll take it zero, straight up, straight ahead. Okay, as close as we can anyways. There we are, that's close we're gonna get it. We'll bring her back just a whisper. If it was my car, I'd, I'd be leaving her negative about a quarter degree anyways. Maximum performance. Come on back, baby. Just a whisker. There she is, now we'll tighten that top cam bolt down. Now that that's tight, I'll come over on the driver's side. Now I crack these cam bolts loose over here. And we'll move that one in. Yes, that's a blind one. That's a little bit tight still there, fella. Our top cam doesn't want to move, oh, but it's about to. We're gonna, I've got it loose. We're gonna see if we can't. Just give her a little brop, big nasty. And I'm gonna try to get it to crack loose in that strut. Sometimes that's how it takes. We'll see. That helped. No, it didn't. Mother lover. I'm gonna loosen it up some more. Get a little nastier. Now we have them both super close. We're gonna hit next where it's gonna want us to lower the vehicle. Uh, make sure you align your front turntable so when it comes down on it that they're not pegged out. So on the front here, the camber adjustment on the left side is pretty well maxed out that's the best I could get is about it bounces negative 10 you know negative 12 
So I kind of split the difference. I made the right side a little more negative. It's not going to hurt anything. Um, bounce the front end here. Just to kind of see where our readings end up. Everything kind of stabled out. So I tried to just split the difference a little bit. I'm not going to chase out, you know, like I say, a couple hundred thousandths of a degree. Um, I just didn't want the right side sitting straight up and down and left side having a bit of negative aspect to it. So now that that is done, we'll go through and we'll set the toe. All right, I've been pulled off this job about 15 times on the phone, talking to customers and everything, not an excuse. Uh, what I've done is, I think when we left off, we were in a jack and hold position on the camber. I've clicked ahead, it has you let the jacks down, you jounce the suspension and all that. Ended up making a few more adjustments on the camber because like I say, this side was maxed out. And uh, after I've rolled the vehicle back and forth, I you know make sure everything's settled. You always want to make sure your suspension is settled. You jounce it, you roll it back and forth. I redid the wheel compensation. And then I re-swung my caster just to be sure. Everything looks pretty good. Our rear stayed nice. Uh, rear toe, rear camber, front camber, front caster. You can see our total toe is actually on right now. So the car is actually lined up, but our steering wheel would be crooked if we drove it. So what we're gonna do now, uh, I've got the wheel set straight. We're gonna go through and adjust our toe. Uh, we're gonna use a program on here called Easy Toe, because that makes it easy. And then I want to level the steering wheel, which we've already done. Now with Easy Toe, you can actually turn the wheel so you can get it to where it's easy to adjust and then adjust it. These should be easy in the straight position, so we'll do the right side first. So if all is right in the world, this will come loose for us. And it did, look at that. Woo! Sweating. That camber was a pain in the hoo-hoo. And we're gonna get on the inner tie rod here. And let's see, this one we need to make it grow. Watch him grow, baby! If I can get on it. All right. So we're getting pretty close. And then we have to tighten up our jam nut. Now, sometimes when you tighten up the jam nut, things move. So we'll get it close right there. We'll tighten up the jam nut. We'll see if anything changes. And then we'll compensate for it. All right, so. Tighten it down. We're gonna leave that one alone. Right next. Now we'll do the same thing here on the left wheel. Let's see if all is right with the world over here. Can't loosen this one up. Yeah, there we go. Oh yeah. This one we need to shrink it. We're gonna screw this one in. Tighten up the jam nut, see what happens. We'll re straighten our tie rod. Alright, jam nut's tight, tie rod end is straight. That's good enough for the girls I run with, I'll tell you that. We'll spend all day trying to get them perfect, folks. We'll hit max, now it wants us to you know, de stress the front end. So you can see how much things change uh, simply by sitting in it, by bouncing it. You know, things change drastically, uh, to be honest with you. So if you're sitting there chasing out really tiny numbers, you know, in the hundreds of degrees, 
you're going to be there all day. Take the car for a drive, put it back on the alignment machine, and it's going to be a little different. Then we come down here. <laughs> Huge cabinet all adds in to the printer. <sighs> so this will print out our before and after specs. We give this to the customer. Of course, it saves the readings also, but over here you have all your before measurements, all red. Over here it's all green, bad, good. Everybody's happy. And that's that, folks. Uh, all it comes down to now is eating our egg salad sandwich Mrs. O brought out to us. And then dealing with the 500 other things you got doing today. Uh, but that's your Hoffman Geoliner 678. Uh, this is your Mitsubishi 3000 or your Dodge Avenger, whatever you want to call it. Uh, not horrible sometimes. Like I say, they can be pretty finicky. It depends on how fussy you are. What I try to do uh, for our customers, if they're adjustable, we adjust it the best that we can. You know, particularly if it's, you know, it's green, but, you know, it's right on the edge of, you know, outside of the alignment specs or manufacturer specs. We try to move it in, get it super close. And if you're ever filling around an alignment machine, it's quite interesting to see, particularly on lighter weight cars or cars, you know, springs are kind of saggy and stuff in. Sit inside the car. You know, you get it all lined up, you sit inside of it, you know, alignment's off. Just, it's just the way the geometry of the suspension works or, you know, if you got, you know, you're in it and then you put three other people in it, you know, now the, now the alignment's way off. Uh, on certain cars. Some cars you sit in and it doesn't affect them at all, but uh, even this one, you know, I sit in the driver's seat and it, it changes the wheel alignment specs. Sit in it, get out, you know, things are off, you know, a couple tenths. So uh, that's that. Uh, why don't you guys head on down to that comment box, leave your questions, comments, criticism, concerns, wait on here, subscribe, ring that bell. What's up, Mrs. O? Did you do it? Yeah, I did. You guys on? Find us on our socials, Facebook, Insty. That's the official Insty thing. Is that official? Yeah. I think my teapot's listening. Okay, better go get it. And just remember viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.